Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. If I would ask you this question, would you know the answer? Do you know why President of the United States of America, Joseph Biden, invited and received uh, Modi, the Prime Minister of uh, India, in the uh, United States, in Washington, D.C.? Do you know why? Well, the answer is very obvious why. And uh, we have a problem here with uh, USA Today and uh, an um, academic not knowing why actually Biden uh, bends over backwards for Modi. Well, let's uh, jump into this and figure out why do you think Biden does that to Modi after it failed with China and Russia? I wonder why. Can you afford having three enemies at the same time? Or is it better to have only two? I mean, you were dumb enough to have two in the same time. Now you're going to probably have three. And uh, you wonder why do you want to win over this one right here? All right, let's see this little article coming from uh, USA Today. It's very awkward. It's in uh, uh, quotation marks. Biden throws a lavish state dinner for India's right-wing Prime Minister Modi. So, I don't think it's awkward whatsoever, and this is called diplomacy. Because the United States never, never, never threw a lavish state dinner for dictators or kings or princes or anything like that, ever. Ever, ever, never, never. But they first label Prime Minister Modi as a right wing, which is a no-no. And I thought that this guy right here, the President of the United States of America, represents United States of America and the American people, not the left wing American people or the right wing American people. But hey, maybe I'm just old fashioned and I still believe in democracy. Anyway, which I don't. I uh, believe in a certain kind of democracy, not in a mass democracy where every biped, dumb or not, knowing anything about the subject or not, can go and vote and nullify someone else's vote who might know something about that subject. Anyway, that's how you have it so great and pe people like this guy over here and she's so happy about it. I can't believe it. I think she's, she's more guilty than he is for the fact that he's still right here. I think could be because she wants to be here. She doesn't say, hey, Joe, let's go. No, let's stay, Joe. I like it being here. Anyway, history, my friends, history. So, Indian's democracy at a, is at a weak point, says who? Where's your evidence? Cite it. When I was in college here, it was like this. Whenever you made a statement like this, and it was not common knowledge, which this is not, you're supposed to uh, you know, use a quotation. Where did you get this from? Since these guys don't use it, I don't take it as a fact. All right? The US government has accused India of engaging in significant human rights abuses. That's, that's right, that's correct. You can accuse when they don't do what you want. But if India would accuse US of any abuse, no, 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 we are perfect. Or we just have riots in the United States of America because that's not abuse. We talk about here about, what was that? Uh, what do they call it? Uh, systemic this and systemic that, which I don't believe in, by the way. Uh, I don't think it's there because it's not in the law. There are people who have certain views uh, on all stripes. And yet, on Thursday, the US president is throwing India's prime minister a lavish state dinner. What is he supposed to do? You... This guy right here, this is the, the person who uh, makes these uh, claims. So let's go jump at, at his first uh, uh, statement here. This is, the whole thing is based on this guy's uh, statement. I'm quoting, It's very awkward and embarrassing even to have the rhetorical emphasis on democracy for the foreign policy while at the same time this critical partner is seen as a backsliding said Ifran Noruddin, a professor of Indian politics of Georgetown University School of Foreign Service. So he's not an idiot, supposedly. But I wonder, and I would like to, I like to ask this gentleman, uh, how about this guy right here? Doesn't know where he's at. This guy right here visiting Saudi Arabia. What do you think about it? Doing deal, deal, dilly, nilly, dilly with those guys. How about that? 
I have nothing to do with them. Let them, uh, you know, conduct their internal affairs the way they want. But you are so critical about this guy right in the middle because, mm -mm. but no, it's okay with the other guy. That's okay. We can do business with those guys. That's called diplomacy, my friends. And a lot of times and here, they tell Modi, M Modi pressed on human rights. That's what you do. You're just moralizers. I don't know how you became the world global moralizer, because if you look back in the history, you have no way to talk about it. There's no room for you to say anything. The same with the atomic energy. And who can have an atomic bomb? Who cannot have it? Who can have peaceful atomic energy? Who cannot? United States has a word on that. Why? You are the only, the only offender of dropping atomic bombs. You, you, you raped two times. And you tell us about, you lecture us, who might be or who could be or what you right because you know better if that would be the logic that means all the I don't know uh, rape judges would be ones who already raped because they know right see how stupid that is the same here these guys somehow point fingers oh they've been doing this at everyone but they have Jim Crow's they had slavery they have many other things and now they have the stupidity with the woke thing and they po still point fingers you are not on that white horse. Get down and be like this guy, a diplomat. What's going on here, Mr. Naradubi Gabba Gabba? This is called diplomacy. When you try to befriend someone so he can agree to something that you are going to fight your enemy. That's what's going on here. If Biden, is, there's, these guys are telling Biden to kneel and suck a bonbon, he's going to do that right now. Uh, he doesn't know what he's doing anyway. That's why it's m much easier. Because at this point, United States really, 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 really needs India much, much, much more than India needs United States. That's the big problem. And if India, which is like this right now, veers a little bit more that way, you can't bring it back. You cannot. So India is like um, Turkey. You don't want it to leave, but you don't want it in your house. It, it's like this. The same thing here. You don't want... Uh, uh, Turkey in, in NATO, but you have to because you need it. The same is with India. India is already gone, but India takes advantage as it should, sees its interest as it says, I don't care. I'm going to buy oil from these guys if it's cheap. I'm going to buy it from you if you give it to me cheaper. But you tell me, no, no, they're bad dudes. You sure not because you say you're the good dudes. Yes. That's the whole thing. So I think Biden is doing a great job or the people not Biden, the people behind Biden by doing everything Modi wants. And they do a good job because that's called diplomacy. The US diplomacy in the past 30, 32 years were this. Threats, blackmail, uh, regime change and attack, bombardments. That, that, that was it. Not like this because they didn't have to. They did not have to say, okay, let's be friends. I'm going to give you, we're equal here, which is hard for these guys to say that an empire cannot be equal to anyone or show any weaknesses because all the subjects will see that and they will start challenging the authority. So they cannot do that. So in this case, they say hey, India is an important country, a biggest democracy, we were told, right? Now it's not because they don't do what we want. So that therefore they're not a, a democracy, a, a barely make it because we decide, we decide, but they cannot decide. No one can decide how good we are. Only we can decide how good we are. Is this like the, the senators and the um, uh, House representatives in the United States? They vote their salaries and their perks and all that. It's like you go to your work, to your job and say, OK, let me see. Uh, guys, how much should be our income today? What do you think? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, OK, that's how they do. The same United States. We are we are just uh, we are reflecting on our problems. We have our problems, but you can't talk about them. Only we can talk about yours. That doesn't apply to, apply to you. You can't do the same thing we do. And that's so hypocritically. That, uh, believe me. Don't believe me. Uh, read. Look around. A lot of people, a lot of countries over there, they look at it and they hate it. And then they ask, uh, why, they, why do they do this? Why, uh, they hate our freedom. No, they don't hate your freedom. They hate those guys' people's attitude. And now they kick those guys in the teeth whenever they want, whenever, however they want. So yes, they need India, and it's good that these guys are doing good for the American uh, for the Americans. Will they succeed? 
they will succeed some because Modi will say, yes, I take this. Thank you very much. No, I can't do this. Yes, I want this because India knows that the, what, what exactly what this is. Modi knows exactly that this is a cheap way of building relationships and uh, uh, using diplomacy. Th that's what it is right now. He knows. And, you, and you'll see, uh, Modi will leave with some things. Yeah, we're going to have this program with you guys. We're going to give you some weapons or something. We're going to give this, this, this. But the main thing is still going to be the resources. Where do they get the resources? Russia. Mother Russia. You know that song, Iron Maiden, right? Mother Russia. Listen to it. So the same here. Mother Russia will provide India with cheap resources. Cheaper than anybody else. Anybody else. So they can't, and they can't. Uh, if they cut that bloodline of energy, the, the supply of uh, you know energy and so on, uh, India will have a problem developing. I and mean, if you don't don't develop economically, your nation will be very unstable. When you're gonna have being stable, uh, you have problems, social problems, and then you're gonna have the third tool in U.S.'s diplomacy toolbox, which is a little regime change, and a little regime change is based on a spontaneous uprising. So it's easier uh, with a very dissatisfied population uh, uh, to create a spontaneous, uh, you know, something like that. Uh, whereas a cool society with everything. Come on, leave me there. I don't, don't want to go outside in the cold. I have my beer here and my stupid TV. I don't want to go outside and protest. Blah, 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 blah. Nah, that's what happens here. Too comfortable, too fat. All right, my friends, so good job. Uh, that's a, a good beginning for the United States of America. Will it be successful? Partly, until they will, you see, I don't know if you ever met this kind of people who want something from you. They were acquaintances, not friends, acquaintances. And they don't, call, they don't call you for some time and then they need something. And when they need something, they call you all of a sudden and you realize by their loving and insistency that they want something because it's too, they jump from not uh, talking to you for three years, already already inviting you to go. He's gonna pay for everything. Just come and meet. I want to talk to you. I miss you so much. You know, and that's that's the poor way of doing things because you don't do it straight. There is too obvious the rupture from not talking to being uh, loving. All right. So you go gonna go and you don't do it in the first attempt. You go little by little, and after five or six or seven times, you say okay. Um, I have a problem, but you know, you make it not so obvious. So I'm, I'm wondering how much patience US will have with this, or this will be the first attempt. And after that, they will ask something. The guys will say no, and then it's not going to be the second one. You can't do it like this, too obvious. And the other guys are knowing it. So you got to wine and dine uh, India for a while. And then you say, how about now drop those guys, impose sanctions beyond my team over here. So we'll see. And I don't think the United States has that patience. Why? Because it's hard to change a behavior from a tyrannical behavior around everybody in the parking lot to being, OK, actually, we're equal here. We're going to vote. We're all the same. No, I can't do that. Yeah, I apologize. Let me caress you a little bit here. No, they're not going to change overnight. You need time. I mean, you can say you change, but you know how it is. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.